parents, Mr. and Mrs. James D. Howard, Jr. With their $20, students will pay it forward and they'll help a local organization in need. This project is a journey, not the destination or the grade. So we're gonna ask you all to pause, to be still, and to dream big. Where might God be calling you? Where do you need eyes to see? What have you done for Christ? What are you doing for Christ? And what will you do for Christ? In the past 11 years, our 7th and 8th graders have dreamt big and they've raised over $359,000 for over 80 local organizations. That's an, a staggering amount. And while we're incredibly proud of them and of their achievements, the Arupi Project is not a competition to see who can raise the most money. We want you to know that it's the, not the amount raised that measures the success of the project. It's about your effort, your faith, and your journey. Students research social injustices and issues, and they discern which organization they feel they are being called to serve. They contact the organization, determine what the needs are, and then they set a goal for their fundraising effort and work on formulating a plan to use their $20 not only to reach their goal, but to extend it beyond themselves. The Arupe Project lives our Jesuit charism of service at an age-appropriate level, and it prepares our students to take the next step. Students, if you find yourself thinking about having the whole thing done and graded and spending your money right now, I'm going to ask you to stop and pause. Parents, you can help your student to enjoy each phase of this journey and not worry about having all the pieces together right now or what the end product will be. It's about formation and being open to growth as our students become men and women for others, and we will help them each step of the way. The Arupe Project has been recognized at both the local and the national level. And through our partnership with Catholic Charities, the Arupe Project is being used as a model for volunteerism. Miracle projects based on the Arupe Project are being held in parishes and Catholic schools throughout the diocese. And in 2015, I was honored to give a presentation about the Arupe Project to the National um, Catholic Charities Conference. So who knows, there might be other Arupe Projects or Miracle Projects around that, that we're not even aware of. Um, we are blessed to have our extremely strong collaborative ministry with Catholic Charities, and we're grateful for their partnership. Thank you, Catholic Charities, for all the work you do caring for those in need and for helping our students to live out the works of mercy and Catholic social teaching. We are grateful for you. Thank you, Catholic Charities. In 2017, the Arupe Project received the Arizona Interfaith Movement Golden Rule Youth Award at their annual banquet. This prestigious award recognizes and celebrates individuals and organizations who exemplify living out the Golden Rule. We are proud of our current and former St. Francis students who have lived out the Golden Rule through their participation in the Arupe Project. The following video was created and shown at the award banquet. It describes the project, and we hope will provide valuable information for you about the philosophy and the goals of the project. Even though this video is a few years old, you can kind of tell by my changing hairstyles in it, um, and you've seen it before, some of you may have had older children, it is a great video and it really gives a great insight to the project, so you're bound to see something new. The Arupe Project is now in its sixth year at St. Francis and is named in honor of former Superior General of the Jesuits, Pedro Arupe. The goal of this service learning unit is to empower students to become men and women for others through faith, service, and justice as they demonstrate our student learning expectation of being committed to doing justice.
The Arupe project is when the seventh and eighth graders, they do discernment and they pick a charity. And then for that charity, they have to plan an event or do the Arupe marketplace. And the way you earn money is by making handcrafted items. So, and in this case, I made hand-painted note cards that I sold at both um, here at school and at the parish on Sunday. And when you're selling the products, our school has the Arupe Marketplace, which is where there's a bunch of different stations around the courtyard. And you can go around and buy whatever products you like. And in eighth grade, you host a fundraiser to raise money for the organization. And then we do an event for the charity to raise money. And then afterward, we'll, we go to the store and we buy the items that we earned from our event and then we donate all the items and deliver it to the charity. And our school motto is for kids for others, to become kids for others. And so the Arupe Project was a way for our students to live that out. This year I chose to help domestic violence victims. I used to pass by a really bad neighborhood um, to come to school. And I just used to see like really poor people and how they were just needed help and I really wanted to help them and stuff. I like to help others. I like to and I think by helping others, you serve God. What we really wanted our students to do was to really live and experience what it means to be committed to doing justice and to be a kid for others. I related to it because it really made me realize how grateful I am for everything that I have and that so many people aren't as fortunate as I am, but I can make a difference in some of their lives. You know, we fine tune the project every year based on um, the needs of our students and kind of where they're at developmentally. Uh, but I think the biggest piece of it is for us, the, the difficulties come in in helping the students learn how to deal with difficulties. And I think that's one of the best things about this project is you'll hear parents and kids say, I learned how much I could do. I learned what do you do when, when things don't work out for me? How do I have grit? How do I have perseverance? How do I make things work when they don't go right? Because in any kind of fundraising, you know, sometimes you don't, it doesn't work out for you. You know, sometimes you might lose uh, money on a fundraiser. And so I think for us, it was very important from the get-go that everybody understood this is not about money and it's not about a competition. It's really about your journey and what you're putting into it. What I love about this project is it allows for other kids that maybe wouldn't shine in the classroom to be able to shine and feel that strong sense of pride in what they're doing. What, what they really take to heart is after they deli deliver their items to each organization. I think they're finally able to see firsthand people that are affected by these social justice issues that they have felt called to help. And I just love when they come back to me and they're like, Miss McCone, you know, I had no idea that, you know, people my age were homeless on the street and I brought them food and we got to eat with them and they realize how fortunate they are. When I walked in and delivered those items, you could just tell in their faces how grateful they were and that was just a really gratifying experience. I had to make the products, start with something basic and then make all the products and then when I finally made all the products, had to sell them at the Rupee Marketplace, which was an amazing experience. Then I had to use that money to uh, buy the items for the, my charity, which was Assistance League of Phoenix. They have four charities under their umbrella, and the one I chose was Operation School Bell, which helps kids who can't afford school clothes to go to school. And I uh, bought a whole bunch of school clothes and donated to them, but it was, it was a great experience and one that I'll never forget. I felt like it helped me realize that there are people in need in our community, and all we have to do is reach out and help them. And then, by doing this, we can make a difference in the world. We can be more than ourselves and impact the world in ways we never thought possible. I've seen that video multiple times, but I just, I, I just get chills thinking about um, how passionate our students are. Those are all obviously former students, uh, how passionate they are to serve others. But I see that same 
um, commitment to that SLE from our current seventh and eighth grade students. So parents, I just want to say to you as their primary educators, uh, you're, you're doing such a great job. Our seventh and eighth grade students this year especially um, really are ready to show how they're committed to doing justice. Um, and so at this time, I would like to review the Arupe Agreement form that was sent home. This agreement highlights the major commitments both parents and students are asked to make as part of the Arupe project. Students, you are being called to a greater responsibility. And parents, although this project is student-led, your child is going to need support from you, their primary educators. Students, uh, please stand and respond to I do to each of the stated promises and commitments uh, that were sent home. So again, I'll read it and then you'll respond, I do. I agree to be prepared for class and have all required supplies available. Students, I do. I agree to meet all project deadlines on time. I agree to fiscally responsibly knowing that I am a steward of the funds raised for my charity. I agree to give my best effort and to do the majus. I agree to follow all guidelines set forth in Arupe 101 FAQs and those given by my teachers. I agree to be present for all mandatory events. And this is for the eighth grade students specifically. I agree to aim fundraising events outside the SFX community. Fundraising events should not be aimed at other junior high students or SFX families. Eighth grade students, I do. Thank you. Students, you may have a seat. Parents, if you could stand at this time. Parents, similar to our students, the response will be, I do. As parents, I agree to help my student meet all project deadlines on time. I agree to provide guidance and support for my students while allowing them to take ownership. I agree to ensure my student is fiscally responsible, understanding their role as a steward of funds raised for their charitable organization. I agree to ensure my students, excuse me, my students are presenting and prepared at school for mandatory dates such as the marketplace and delivery date. And now specifically to our eighth grade parents. I agree to make sure my student follows all guidelines set forth in the Arupe 101 FAQs and those given by the teachers, especially regarding only fundraising outside the SFX community. Fundraising events should not be aimed at other junior high students or SFX families. Eighth grade parents? Great. Parents, you may have a seat. Thank you. Students, remember, by signing the form, you made a commitment to put your best effort forward and live out our Ignatian principles of being kids for others. And parents, you have agreed to support your child, which includes helping and guiding them to abide by the project guidelines. Eighth grade parents, we especially need your support when it comes to planning and hosting the Arupe events. A successful fundraiser is one that promotes the charity, builds community, and raises funds in that order. Eighth grade fundraising events should be aimed outside the SFX community, not as social events for SFX students and families. Your guest list should not include junior high students or SFX families, as this can create a hardship in our community when the same families are asked repeatedly to donate. Go outside the SFX community and spread the good news about your charity and the Arupe Project. I look forward to seeing you all set the world on fire through your Arupe projects. And now at this time, I invite Father Bob Fambrini up, who will lead us in prayer. Father Bob. I invite you to please stand. Lord, you told us that whenever two or three are gathered in your name, you are there also. So we begin our prayer as we always do, in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Loving God, at our baptism you called us by name to be your humble, willing servants. 
Today we gather to commission our junior high students to live out our school motto of being kids for others. May our prayers strengthen them for this journey and give them the courage to serve you. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. With Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Jesus said, when the Son of Man comes in glory and all the angels with him, he will sit at his glorious throne. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate the people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. He will put the sheep on his right and the goats on his left. Then the king will say to those on his right, come you who are blessed by my father, take your inheritance kingdom prepared for you since the creation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me something to eat. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you invited me in. I needed clothes and you clothed me. I was sick and you looked after me. I was in prison and you came to visit me. Then righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you? thirsty or give you something to drink? When did we see you a stranger and invite you in or needing clothes and clothe you? When did we see you sick or in prison and go to visit you? The king will reply, truly I tell you, whatever you did for the one of these least of my brothers and sisters, you did for me. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Please be seated. like to uh, once again invite all of you here this morning. When I walked into church just before and I saw all these people coming in, I thought, wait, this wasn't like the way it was last year. And of course it wasn't. Last year we just simply had the students here, and so it's wonderful to have parents along with students here. So welcome to all of you. We've all had the opportunity uh, in this information age to receive um, as gifts or maybe purchased ourselves new cell phones or computers or iPads. And once we charge them up and turn them on and get our signal, we're all set to go. But what we realize after a while is that there are settings that come from the factory. That instrument, when it comes to us, has already set certain ways that we're going to be able to send messages, we're able to be able to create a document, whatever they're called, the factory settings, the factory settings. And after a while, we realized that, no, we want to make some changes. We want to change the font, or we want to change the script, or this thing, or that thing. And so we have to go into the settings and manually change them, change the default position. Otherwise, if we don't, every time we turn it on, it's going to go back to the factory settings. I think of this when uh, I think of a definition that I heard many years ago of original sin. We all know what original sin is. And the description was this. Original sin is the tendency we were all born with, that factory setting we came with, to think of ourselves first. What's in it for me? What do I get out of it? I've got to admit, it's probably happened two or three times to you already today. It's just kind of what we're born with. And it takes an entire lifetime to change that default position, that default setting. So it isn't what's in it for me, it's how can I help the other. And if we just heard the gospel today, that's exactly what happens as God is separating the sheep from the goats, and he says to the sheep, you know, you fed me when I was hungry, you clothed me when I was naked. And do you hear the response? The response is, when did we see you? When did we see you naked or hungry or in prison? That's such an, a, an incredible response because their default position has been changed so that they think of the other one first. 
they weren't thinking what they could get out of it. They were thinking of how they could help the other. And what you are doing here in the Rupe Project is part of that lifelong task to change the default position from thinking of yourself to thinking of the other first. This is what, what it means to be a Christian. The grace we receive is what we share with others. We don't just keep it for ourselves. So I congratulate you this morning as we begin this Arupe project. I hope you see it in terms of your lifelong goal of being boys and girls, men and women for others, always going out from this position of what it's in it for me to how can I best serve those that are most in need. So congratulations to all of you, students and parents, in this journey together. And now I ask the students to please stand and respond, I will. Students, will you commit yourselves to living out your school motto of being a kid for others? Your Rupe project is based on the principles of Catholic social teaching and the works of mercy. Do you commit to living out the works of mercy and principles of Catholic social teaching, especially with regard to dignity of the human person, option for the poor and vulnerable, and in solidarity? Will you commit yourselves to doing your best work and being your best self so that others may see you as the faith, face, hands, and feet of Jesus? And now I ask for the students to be seated and I ask for parents and guests to please stand and to respond, I will. Recognizing our communal, communal responsibility for rearing these young people in the faith, will you be examples of these, of, for these students of love for others, service, faithfulness, and living out our call as members of the body of Christ? Will you promise to encourage and support and participate in their Arupe journey while allowing them to take responsibility for their successes missteps. Parents, as the primary educator of your child, do you commit to walk with them on this journey and help them to grow in faith, justice, and service? And now I ask you to please be seated. Lord, we praise your goodness, your mercy, your love. You have given us amazing gifts in these young men and women. Be with us and help us to be good examples of faith in action. Be with them and help them to be a visible sign of love for their brothers and sisters in Christ, so that in all that they do, they will give you the glory. And we ask this through the goodness of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Jesus the Good Shepherd has called us each by name, and at this time we will call each student forward to be commissioned to go forth and set the world on fire through the Arupe Project and receive an envelope containing their $20 of startup funds. I now invite Father Bob, Mr. Watson, our representative from Catholic Charities, Ms. Milano, Ms. Harmio, and Mr. Browner and Mrs. Taney to come forward for the commissioning. Students, when your name is called, please make a sign of reverence before you come up on the altar. And parents and students, um, we're going to ask that there be no applause. Um, this is kind of a solemn commissioning rite, um, but we're going to have an opportunity to congratulate everyone when we're done. Um, I just want to apologize in advance if I mispronounce any names. I've worked really hard to get all the correct um, pronunciations. But if I make a mistake or if I maybe skip your name as I'm reading, just come on up and let me know and whisper in my ear and, and then I'll, uh, I'll, I'll make it right.
And then students, when you come forward, you'll just go to somebody that's open up here and, and go to that person, okay? Allie Acuna. Braden Baldwin. Sienna Andrews. Rose Blue. Dario Armeo. Tristan Bonzel. Carson, Alex Buggy, John Karunji, Juliana Bulkley, Valeria Cesar, Cesares, Andrea Caballero, Taylor Cavanaugh, Blair Callahan, Dante Saracola, Luisa Carrion Gamas, Ryan Chan, Valentina Corolla, Dylan Cook, Ava Cooper, John Prager, Paige McKeever, Henry Pastor, Kevin Medina, Alice Patton. Kiri Etsidi, Emmanuel Estrada, Kennedy Brakes, Jack Quinn, Jalissa Baeza, Brock Renna, Hazel Peterson, Fernando Rodriguez, Sydney Pompey, Mariana Rodriguez, Delton Prescott, Chantel Rojas, Nancy Rosales Torres, Michael Kwan, Hugh Ruffner, Lucy Ryan, Courtney Ryan, Ryan Flick, April Galindo Hernandez, Ureli Fonseca, Breezy Gonzalez Sapuentes, Cooper Brakes, Camilla Gonzalez Salazar, Chloe Fulton, Alexander Kuzak, Jace Gannon, Eliza Hager, Matthew Gayona, Joel Holmes, Javier Hansen, Will Jacobson, Teddy Hazen, Miguel Salazar Rivera, Sammy 
Nation. Isaac Sanchez. Jeremy Simon. Georgia Schultz. Joe B. Simon. John Self. Christiana Singh. Natalie Cheyenne Lutz. Seth Stegman. Connor Steele. Congratulating our students and wishing them the best on their Arupe projects. I ask the uh, students to please stand. Parents, guests, and faculty, raise your right hand as we ask God's blessing upon them. God of compassion and mercy, we ask your blessings upon these students. Be with them and help them as they live out your call of service and mercy by loving those around them. May they be filled with your spirit as they go out to do your work, and may they see your presence always. Help them to turn to you in good times and bad and know that you are our strength. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. I ask the students to please be seated. And now our closing prayer. Oh Lord, what an amazing opportunity you have spread out before us. A chance to make a difference for you in a world that is desperately hurting. Help us to see the needs you want us to see, to react in a way that honors you, and to bless you by serving them gladly. Help us to be the hands and feet of Jesus, and through your spirit, give us the strength and wisdom we need to fulfill your plans for us. And in Jesus' name we pray. Parents and guests, uh, thank you so much for taking the time to be here today and partner with us in your child's education. Um, as I said in the beginning, these are just two outstanding groups of students, and I tell them all the time, they're really, they set such a good example 
for our younger students. And you just see that and the positivity and the energy they bring to our campus each and every day. And again, that starts at home. So really grateful to everybody in our church this morning. I want to give a big thanks to Father Bob. And Father Bob, thank you for modeling for us what it means to be a man for others and live out the ideals and practices of St. Ignatius of Loyola and Father Pedro Arupe. Also like to thank Mr. and Mrs. James D. Howard for their generous gift, which allows the Arupe Project to go forward and help so many people in need. Thank you to Catholic Charities for your continued partnership and support. We're so grateful for that partnership that we have with you. And a really special thanks to our Arupe team, Mrs. Westerfield, Mrs. Jaramillo, and Mr. Browner. We could not do it without our incredible teachers and staff. Thank you as well to Mrs. Westerfield for putting together excuse me, today's service together. And before we leave, students, please give your envelope to your parents to take home. Um, and students, I think even more importantly, give your parents a hug or that special person a hug and thank them for coming today. With, without further ado, that brings us to the conclusion of our commissioning and most importantly, students, as you are kids for other, go forth and set the world on fire. Happy Friday, everybody. Have a great day. <laughs> students, you'll be going back to homeroom. Teachers will be helping with that and waiting for the bell to ring before switching periods. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll see you on Sunday. Yeah, see you Sunday. Oh, actually, Father, I'll see you.